Knowing God changes your life. I want you to grow in knowing God. Greater than all of that, which God wants to answer, God's going to give you Himself. You're going to get challenged, but that's how you're going to get to know God better. This is eternal life, that they might know you. Welcome back to Small Group Life at the Vineyard. Wow, it's uh, a new season. And I tell you, I can't, I, I can't remember the last series uh, in our groups that I've been as excited about as I am this one. Uh, if you can't get excited about this, you, you kind of have to question your, your faith. Uh, you know, we're, we're anchoring this whole series both Sunday morning and, and on our small groups. Small groups, we're going to focus on how to grow in knowing God. And on the weekends, we're going to just talk about knowing God. We're basing all of it in John 17, 3, where Jesus defines the only place in the Bible. He defines what eternal life is. It's not about heaven or, or whatever. He said, and this is eternal life, that we might know God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Knowing God. You know, I, I want to just kind of set the stage for for the the just the depth of this series by telling you the moment I had uh, early this morning, the wee hours of the morning, I got up and you know passion just kind of fine tuning the message, and I'm in my office with my dog uh, Bentley. It's dark out and not real well lit. And all of a sudden, I hear this boom, and I'm like, "Well, what was that?" Something I hear noises. All thing. Next thing I know, I look up and there's this big slimy tree frog, and I hate tree frogs. I hate any kind of frog. So I'm trying to get him out, open the door, the dog goes out, and I'm I'm flicking him out and he's jumping and you can almost hear him go, ee, ee, and he leaves puddle, he lands on my phone. There's a puddle. And then he looks at me and he jumps and lands on my chest. I fell back into my chair, fell into my bookshelves, knocked pictures off the shelves, screamed several Bozo nozos, uh, bad words. If you don't know what that means, I called him. Uh, uh, I can't quote what I called him. And then I put on. And then I, my manhood was violated. I was embarrassed, and I was just thinking, "Thank God nobody saw me screaming at a frog landing on me." So that was what prepared me. I'm like, "Lord, really?" So then I get back into the word. And I get that, and I I get him out of the office finally, and I hear another plump. And here's number two. And I mean, I fought frogs most of the morning getting them out of my office. So anyway, we're going to talk about knowing God. That's my favorite subject. It's uh, uh, if you bore with it, you don't know God. Uh, if I bore you with it, I, I, I forgive me. Uh, that means I'm, I'm, I have a questionable relationship with the most excited. It amazes me how pastors can preach and make God either boring, irrelevant, or worse, perverted, you know, angry and mean and condemning and judging. And yeah, I want you to grow in knowing God. If you stay where you are, wherever you're at, your knowledge will decrease. It's just a spiritual principle. You don't keep what you have if you don't grow and what God's done and given you. If you're not sharing it, giving it away, if you're not responding, if you're not having fresh experiences with the Lord, you don't get to just keep, stay at the same level. It will diminish. It will, it, you will shrink. Your heart will shrink. If it's not being enlarged, it's shrinking. There is no, I'm just, you know, steady Eddie, stay in the course, no big high, no big lows, no, you know, that's not good. God wants you to grow. So we're going to go through some ways that are basics. They're not no, there's no wow factor here. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know. I just want to encourage you. Uh, these, are, these are ways, means by which you grow in knowing God. You, it doesn't just happen. You don't just get closer to God and know more about God by just living life. You have to proactively want to grow and to seek him. So our first way, the primary way that you're going to ever grow in knowing God is in 
worship. I want you to look in Psalm 27. David, if there's a, a figure you could pull out in the Bible that knew God, not perfect, he's not, but, but when you see the depths of his worship and his prayers and his praise and his, and, and if I could give you one word that I think reflected his whole life as word confidence, not arrogance, not, uh, not a, a self-righteous, but a, he had a, a bold confidence that God loved him. He knew God loved him. And that was the, and, and if you don't have that, your worship is going to be radically affected. You know, uh, uh, A.W. Tozier, one of my favorite, my wife and I both love his writings in his book on the knowledge of the holy. He talks about the fact that whatever you think about God, whatever your view of God is, will determine what your life will be like, who you'll be. If you have wrong views, low views, bad views of God, you're not going to have a healthy spiritual life. What you think of when you think of God is the most important thing in your world. So, David, let's look at him. Psalm 27, beautiful psalm. Can't cover it all, but let me just start in verse 1. He says, the Lord is, and I just think it's feel the confidence in this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when enemies, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they're going to stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I'll be confident. Now, where does that come from? Because he knew God and he knew how to worship. If you don't know how to worship God, you're not going to have confidence in him. You may have head knowledge, book knowledge, but you're not going to have heart knowledge. Heart knowledge comes from relationship. Eternal life is knowing God. That's a relationship. And in that relationship, the atmosphere of it is us coming to him as worshipers. And if you've not grown in that, I'm not just talking about singing songs. I am talking about a heart that's surrendered in adoration and love and affection and praise and consumed with God. Now listen to what David says. Verse four, one thing, one thing. He summarized all, now he's asked, he asked for all kinds of things. But if you summed up all of his passions in one thing, it's in this prayer. You know a lot, we'll talk about this when we get to prayer. Do you know a lot about who you are by what you pray for? It just defines you. You know a lot about who you are by how you worship God. If you're prone to just come to God when things are bad, if you're prone to only praise Him when things are good, if you're prone to only uh, uh, worship God because you, you, you just have to, and there's not a, a delight, a passion, a, uh, you, you got to grow. If you want to know Him, you got to worship Him. David said, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek after. Now look what he asked for, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why? To, to, to feel religious, to feel, no. Why does he want to be in the temple? Why does he want to be in the house of the Lord? What's his motive? He says this, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Just stop for a minute and just, what, what is the beauty of the Lord? I mean, hopefully, many things come to your mind. I mean, you could start with seeing the beauty of the Lord in creation, whether it's uh, the clouds, the, the rainbows, the birds, the, the trees, the flowers. The, the, you, you, it's, it's, creation reflects the, the beauty of the Lord. But, but if you go deeper, pull back the curtains. Let me ask you it this way. When's the last time? You've had a fresh glimpse of something about God that was beautiful, that caused your heart to praise Him. If you don't have an answer to that, 
You're not taking the one thing that David did. You're not taking the time, the focus, the, the, the priority to be a worshiper. I'm not talking about even Bible. There's a lot of people that study their Bible. Uh, there's times I can get caught up in studying my Bible to get ready for a message. And even when I was writing the book of Job, I woke up every morning passionate about thoughts, about getting in the book, and I wanted to go jump right into it. But I, I made a priority. I told the Lord every morning. I, I took my journal, I took my Bible, and I worshiped God with a cup of coffee, and I worshiped God alone as the, as the sun was coming up. And I needed to hear God for me before I wrote things for others. I, I needed to have my soul. I needed to have worship in, in my heart. And you may not be writing a book. You're just going to work or dealing with children or a marriage. Or it, it, same, same difference is that if you don't take time to gaze, I, uh, don't miss that word, it, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. I mean, it, it just... It, it, it's he's captivated with take one. Let me encourage you this week. Take one quality of God that that just get your one of your favorite, and just you could look up verses. There's apps you could look it up uh, verses that reference it. Let's say you're going to gaze on the mercy of God. Just pick one all week, not fifty. Different. I went through 50 different, you know, oh, there's this, there's that, there's kindness, there's holiness, there's beauty, there's justice, there's righteousness, there's power, there's majesty, there's blah, 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 blah. Got it. It's all good. Just take the mercy of God and worship him. Worship him and thank him and see what God shows you about himself as you worship him in that one attribute, that one part of his being that is, that is so uh, beautiful. And just find different ways to praise him about it. I, I find that so many times we just, we're filled with multiple ideas, but gaze, take time, worship, get alone, get on your face, praise him, get on your knees, thank him for that quality, ask him to teach you. You'll be, you get to know him better as you gaze, reflect, and then praise. You can't stop it. Look what David says in verse, he says, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple, verse five, for in the day of trouble, he'll keep me safe in his dwelling. He'll hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle. He'll set me high upon a rock. So you come back to, he's worshiped, he has confidence. He's worshiped, he can overcome fear. He sees God and knows God. He has a, a safety in knowing him. Now, verse 6, then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. Verse 8, my heart says of you, seek his face. Now, this is his heart saying this because the Holy Spirit is moving him. It's, it's, it's not just his natural. Your natural heart isn't going to say, you need to seek the Lord. You need to worship the Lord. He's, he's, he's in touch with the, the, the Spirit of God stirring him up. And he says, my heart says, seek your face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. When you seek his face, you're gazing and the beauty of who he is. Now, I've never seen a literal face, but it's that face that you know, the kind, loving merciful, forgiving, powerful, glorious face. Take some time. Worship the Lord. But let the goal be not that you get goosebumps. That's great. I love goosebumps. Not that you get some warm, fuzzy, emotional feeling. I, I love that too. I, I welcome it if it comes, but sometimes it's, it's just you're, you're it's not a, a real emotional thing. It's just a knowing. The goal this week in worship will be to grow in knowing God in a deeper way. How do you know if that? Because it's going to require you to change something. Something will, 
It's, it's how it always works. When God shows you something about himself, you can't remain the same. It's going to affect you unless it's just an experience and you, woo, you know, cried, laughed, fell down, whatever. That, that doesn't change you. Worship changes us. It shapes us if we're connecting with the face of God. If we're, if we're there in that place of, Lord, speak to me. Lord, I love you. So, so back to the mercy. Say you're meditating on the mercy. What is God showing you as you know him more as a merciful God? How does that change you? How does that help you? How does that make you be a better husband, a better father, a better friend, a better small group person, a better employee? Worship changes us. You can't walk into the presence. Think about people that you've been in their presence and just by their example, their demeanor, their actions, it just it affects you. You, you, you. I love being around men that are just really kind to their wives and servant-hearted and 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 affirming and 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 it, it impacts me. So it helps me want to be a better husband. I, I love being around people that that handle a conflict in a in a really in a Christ-like way. And and there's there's a there's a caution, there's a there's a I'm not going to enter into there's a there's a kind of, and I I walk by I go wow help me Lord be more like that well that is what worship is meant to do is God's not just revealing Himself to you to go for you to go wow God's pretty amazing He's revealing Himself so you can know Him better so that you can be more like Him so that you can grow if worship isn't changing you if it's not stretching you then you need to come back to God in a fresh way and say, Lord, I've made something out of worship it's not supposed to be. I've, it's either routine, ordinary, formalized, or, or maybe you're just going through the motions. Or Worship is about a relationship. It's not about feelings, emotions, and, and all the wow factor. It's about I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with him. I see him. He's awesome. And so if you've dried up, dried up a church, dried up in the Bible, Try it up with the other Christian. It can happen. We all go through those barren times. Let me tell you, your refreshing will come when you spend some time, whether you're listening to worship or just alone in silence or you're in nature or whatever you connect, and you, you, you ask God to unveil an aspect of his being that you could know him better, not just to brag about you know him better, but that you are changed in your worship. Worship changes us. Worship molds us. It shapes us into the likeness of the one that we are gazing upon. What a wonderful thing. That you know God, that I know God, that's a miracle. The God of the universe, I know him. But I got a long ways to go. It'll never be boring. Worship becomes boring when you stop knowing God. When you are seeing God, when he's revealing himself to you, then it's never going to be boring because there's no end to everything that God is. He's infinite. So whatever quality you pick, kindness, it's not like kindness as any reservoir and that you could drain it. It's eternal, unending, unmeasurable, every attribute of God, whether it's love or mercy or, or, or grace or, or whatever, it's limitless. You'll never exhaust it. You'll never get, wow, I really got that. I, I learn more about simple things of God uh, on a regular basis when you worship him. So you grow in knowing through worshiping a heart that says, I want to seek your face, Lord. I'm not going to settle for just your hand doing something for me. That's good. Prayer moves his hand. He, and, and there's things we need God's hand. But I want God. I want to know him. I want to grow because he's amazing. He's amazing. Let's pray together. Father, we just ask and give you permission to stretch us uh, as worshipers. Help us to move out of our familiarity and comfort zone. Lord, to worship you in new ways, fresh ways. And we would ask, Lord, that you would help us 
to gaze on your beauty. Open our eyes, pull back the veil, show us a character quality that this week, each one, speak to them this week, maybe even now as they're waiting on you. Give them the character quality. Give them your attribute that you want them to gaze upon all week long. Father, bless their time of sharing. We thank you for being the amazing God that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.